So, hello and welcome to episode 10 of Face Plays KSP and this episode is a special one as it's all post commentary. So, you have me for 40 minutes, not 3 hours, as just what this took to record. With a glass, probably a pit of biscuits at some point. And some drinks, drinks. So, uh, yeah. I just rambled through uh, the most important part of that. But, yeah, we'll have this nice scene here. Just. And then we'll go on to the really fast time lapse of this. But basically, this was uh, bringing in uh, the stage. And I guess I need to so, just drop the engine before I was supposed to. So I had to do the entire rendezvous and docking on one of repellent. To the point where it's dead easy to overshoot like this. So basically overshoot and then work my way back. Which, you know, took its time. And then we get the docking port tool up and then we align to the docking port. And then fiddle, 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 fiddle. And... Yeah. So now we make our way. Basically, this is basically docking on the second piece of the truss. Which makes the station nice and big, actually. We have lots of room for expansion on this now. We have... 11 spare ports on the, uh... Docking... Uh, on the... On the, uh, truss. A bunch of spare ports in the original section. And then we have another port on the end of the tr of the trusses to add on another module. So, yeah, this thing is highly customizable as a station now. I've got plans for two ports, at least. But yeah, we've basically slow. I, I bought editing me has brought the time lapse to an end for the docking itself, and as you can see, final final uh, corrections, and then start to burn in shortly. It's hard to guess what the I was actually doing during the recording, but you know, oh well. But yeah, so now. Uh, just inching our way in slowly does it. Spinning a bit, but I do it as slowly as possible so we don't damage the station with by docking too hard. Also, slow means we save more RCS money for Helen, which we need to fulfill the contract, so always a good idea to dock these things as slow as possible so you burn less fuel. But there we go. So, uh that's the station uh with the three main structural parts added. And between this section and the next, I believe I am going to just rotate it. But I don't think I show that on camera. But now on to... Uh, building. So, uh, this ship is something I'm pretty proud of. I'm not going to show it all off on camera right now. But you can see some bits there. See the science pods, uh, and the idea is that this is going to be hold seven crew members straight up. In fact, it's hard to ensure it's nice and strictly sound during launch. Well, yeah, fairings help out a lot with that by providing some good support. And then it's a case of, well, we want to be able to reconfigure this thing in orbit, so we need to do make it so we can redock the uh, the engine station. Basically, just put here as things are wrong with the building editor. So we had to start again. Oh well. And so, what's going on here is we're now getting ready to put the science pods on. Uh, these are basically going to. These are this is a science lab, some liquid fuel and water propellant, so that you know it's not entirely useless. Uh, how to use that style of adapter so that we you know dock them side by side, which you'll see what we do later. Some tennis that we can control them in orbit off Kerbin, uh, precisely. Uh, also, the main craft has a larger antenna on it for access relay for that while we're building. And I accidentally hit the launch button. Oops. But yep. Yeah. Uh -oh. okay, we're going to go now to the uh, truss, uh, you know, the truss launch vehicle, and just steal it, and then go back to this and then <laughs> repurpose the launch vehicle because why the hell not? So, yeah. I don't know, it's because we just won't interact badly with the rest of the craft, and then uh, just truss it up, and now we launch it. So, compared to the truss, 
uh, this thing is a lot more stable during launch. I trust when I was doing most of these straight up, this launch goes the same, but um, no, I'm not all that yet. But yeah, this thing was a total to launch, it has such a good plus to weight ratio. Uh, it's possible, like, um, it's, it's structured the sound as well. You might think it's not that those things hanging off the sides, but structurally it is, so. And the reason why I had to throttle down was because uh, it's a bit overheating and to reduce atmospheric effects. So. This thing was pretty much a total to fly. Uh, so much so that I'm going to stop uh, actually flying and do some pretty shots. Which are going to be in place for uh, this thing, this video's uh, thumbnail. But yeah, there we go, beauty shots. It is an I actually, I actually like the design of this uh, launch vehicle quite a lot. This is of course an evening launch because we launch at our own times and here I am messing around the key to try and find the uh, screenshot key so I can hit F3 and look at CAC breaks here so that won't matter so much uh, for this launch namely as uh, yeah I'm just not as well as you can see uh, yeah there we go filling out the function keys trying to find this Run, run, button mashing to find the uh, take screenshot keys. So there we go. We ditched the SRBs now, and we're just onto the liquid fuel boosters. So we're coming over, nice explosion. And this is where I realised, since I was too busy to turn to get take the booty shots, we're coming up way too steep. So uh, keel over immediately and start trying to flatten out this trajectory. And there we go. So. Yeah, the plan is now just, well, the plan now was just to burn the uh, liquid fuel boosters out so we left the main uh, sail on the central core. And then that was it. We'd, we'd do the rest on the main sail and then the poodle in the next stage. And we got back just in time for those to burn out, so slowly does it here. Don't want to have them slam into the uh, main rocket and uh, destroy the fuel tanks, so gently does it. And now we set on we just start planning our orbital insertion. And I have to say, doing post doc commentary on this is so much easier than uh, commentating what you're doing it as you can spend all the time rambling about things. But yeah, there we go, we got our orbital insertion manoeuvre planned. And we're using the RCS to try and push this thing over to <laughs> make the manoeuvre point. Oh well. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're going to split it around the node, so we're going to go pretty much almost as soon as we're on point. I'll make a, slightly, a second or two before we actually burn, but yeah. Ready? Oh, and uh, don't worry about Kessler Syndrome in this mission. That's a lot of debris. This, this mission throws out a heck of a lot of debris. So, Kessler Syndrome, ahoy. But, yep. Anyway, now it's time to show the problem with having a mainsail engine. Slightly over, uh, overweighted here, but oh well. Yep, so we start up the burn, and I'm waiting for it, I'm waiting for it. Really, watch them, take, you can see the nav ball, and then you can see the spacecraft itself flexing. Spaghetti craft! Yep, so. There's a simple solution for this when you have a single engine with a gimbal overpowering things. And that is just to disable the gimbal. You can see it really going now, so. Uh, plan is. Uh, well, gonna drop that. That makes the craft even more wobbly, so well done. Well done there. Good, good strategic planning phase. But yeah, the solution. Just drop. Uh, just turn the gimbal off, and there you go. There you go. The gimbal. The rocket, the rocket no longer tries to angle itself, so things work well. Nice drink. I call them back from. Eh, not, you know, not the fanciest, but it does on a Sunday afternoon. So, and basically flicking the lights on now. So, yeah, this craft, like this, looks brilliant. I've experimented with like large craft in the past, and I have to say this is the sign I think I might recreate in the future. Uh, pretty much as I can do the central core. Uh, pretty much easily. Um, you could bolt things onto the side, even to launch. Uh, if I was to make it so that the top stage to use nuclear engines, I 
get the feeling we could take this thing pretty damn far. And it only requires a crew of seven. It's really, if you were to, uh, really, six though, four scientists, one pilot, and one uh, engineer. You might want a second pilot with you in case you lost one on landing somewhere, if you took a lander with you, but, you know, I think it works as a design. So, yeah. Anyway, so we got our orbital insertion done now, and it's just time for. Uh, well, we're gonna we have a bit of fuel left in that uh, uh, main cell, so yeah, uh, time to set up, get ourselves and play with Minmus, which of course, you know, as you know, just like that. Yeah, ascending node means you're going above the target a little bit, so you always want to burn south. And uh, descending means that you're traveling brain down relative to it, so you want to burn north. But yeah, that's basically it. So nice to case of aligning with the burn and getting ready to do it. So, yeah. Yeah. So, halt. Soon. Trying to remember how I did this. <laughs> right. So we're nearly there now, pretty much. I think. I see. Yeah, I'm trying to shove this massive craft over. Yeah. One of these. This thing maneuvers terribly. So what can you do though? Anyway, it looks like we've got ourselves pretty well orientated now. Still not perfect. But, you know. What can you do? So, maybe we're off mid lane. Maybe I should have sped this up. I still have code speed it up. It's still on the editing screen, but, uh, no. Not doing that. Right then. So now there's a time warp ahead. And as we all know, with time warp, well, it's prone to going horribly wrong, isn't it? So, yeah, as you can see here, where's CAC? Oh, I know where Kak is. It's right there. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, now just time to time warp ahead to uh, get ourselves close to that burn, right? Yeah. So time warp, and we over. No, we don't. Not yet. Really slow. We get bored and say, let's overshoot with time warp. So, yeah, we start the burn. Realize. Realize the maneuvers are now long worse than anything, so we do it eyeball, basically. So what I did here was basically aimed for the 0.5, uh, aimed for the, where the perpendicular, right, you know, completely opposite sides of the orbit. But yeah. Uh, there we go, main cell burnt out, and there we go. Opposite sides of the orbit to each other, and perpendicular to my craft. So that's about the best I could do right now. So, oops. Anyway, uh, yeah, now it's time to start reassembling the, this thing. So, the first thing we have to do is, of course, ditch the last few fairings. Uh, last section of fairings. So, deploy, and it bubbles its way out between the two external, the side, the two side fuel tanks. But, yeah. And now, well, now, now we need to uh, detach the, uh, there we go the command stage and that takes of course with it one section of fairing and now uh, ditch the turn the size of the whole uh, second decoupler only one of those decouplers was attached but you know it, it worked so at least we didn't fire out into the spacecraft we are now translating but you know we can deal with that so yeah so another uh, case of in orbit docking, and already the Kessler syndrome is getting rather impressive, I have to say. It's like, oh yeah, here I was trying to target the uh, rest of the craft, but was getting, uh, trying to click on the debris in front of it. If we wait for the camera to maybe uh, show off, but yeah, you can see there's a piece of debris right there. That's what's trying to target. Oops, see daisy. So, yeah, that's why I got Jeb out to see if we could, uh, Make him see if we could see if that would fix the issue. Turns out the issue was stupidity, not uh, anything to do with the game. So, oh well. 
Anyway, we soon to get transferred back to that command pod, don't we? So now I uh, got our target set correctly, and we're gonna just use the RCS on this to dock properly now. So ready, steady, burn. Uh, well, no, expel. You can't really call it burning zone combustion. It's more decompose. Yeah, we'll decompose the. We'll have the. We'll have the monopropellant decompose and push us towards our target. <laughs> So we're just working our way towards it now, and of course, this tool is going to see a lot of use in this episode. So, yeah, pretty much come to a complete and total halt going to the target while we align properly. And then, well, once we align properly, we'll cancel out the uh, drift we got uh, from the target, horizontally. And then, of course, just work your way in, like you'd normally do. Still forgetting that piece of debris floating right in front of the target, aren't you, Phase? Oh yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, and also the sun's just coming up, which is perfect, really, as... Uh, we can... well, as you all know, the uh, other pod, the science pods, are completely un uh, uncontrollable without the probe bodies stuffed around the end of them. So... If the sun wasn't up, we'd probably lose control of them, trying to dock them, so... It's a good job the sun came for that moment, isn't it? Anyway, you can see where those science pods are going to go. And you can see why I use that shape of adapter from uh, 1.25 to 2.5. Simply as... Uh, it works well, I think, at the end. Uh, once we've got this all docked on, I'll be able to show you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we slightly messed up due to that. And I think also there's an antenna on the front which I've yet to deploy. So as long as the antenna is not deployed, then this thing's not going to be able to dock either. So we just bounced off due to the antenna. But, you know. There we go. There's your antenna. It's set, it's set so that we can relay signals easily. If we're doing this at mo Minmus or on the way to Minmus, we could easily relay the signals to the pods so we can get good control over them. And yeah, so. Fact is though, that is, as you can see, gonna get in the way of the docking, so we have to deploy it before we can even think about doing this. So, spin it, so that way it doesn't hit the uh, guide pylons, uh, well, the docking pylon, the, the holding pylons, the bits of fuel tank we had on the side for the launch, so that, you know, the science pods had something to be attached to. Also, auxiliary fuel tanks as well, so good idea. There we go. The command pod is dot. Took a while, but yeah. Speed is not everything. So, you know, our Keza syndrome looking impressive. Let's add another piece of debris to that list in the form of that uh, decoupler, which is bi directional rather than omnidirectional, so. No. Bi directional rather than uh, unidirectional, so. Yeah. And now we need to knock these science pods onto where they're supposed to be, so that, you know, on our way to minimums we can ditch those external tanks to gain more fuel, uh, well, to the shed weight to gain more delta V, not fuel. You know, same same difference. Oh well. Anyway, what we need to do now is just tuck these on then uh, at the front. So naturally the RCS is misbalanced that rotating this thing causes it to move away from the craft. Great. And also, bonus, because the RCS is misplaced, translating with them means the entire thing starts rotating. Thankfully, our uh, SCS is able to control it, so, you know. But it's just added frustration. All the time. Anyway, uh, so we're just getting aligned finally now. Uh, there we go. And... Roll is also going to be a very important part of the alignment during this process, as we've got to dock these in a specific orientation so that we can get both on the craft. Otherwise, it's just not going to work at all. So, moving down. Basically, trying to get aligned now. So, you know. And, yep. Yeah. So, idea is now. 
rotate so we get 360. I think that's about right, don't you? Yeah, that, that sounds like it should be correct. We'll see when we get there, though. Uh, correcting horizontally now, and correcting uh, our closing velocity so it's minimal, so that, you know, we've got time to, you know, get, get perfectly aligned, so I'm going to get too far away. But yeah, now it's time to crawl our way in. Unfortunately, I switched over to fan control, so brilliant for stopping, you know, this thing wobbling all over the place, but it seems to doing things quickly. Not so much, so... Yeah, as I can see, uh, pretty much a case of uh, drifting out of it, basically, so... Yeah. Oh well. Also, getting a bit of rotation, but we'll correct it when we get there. Namely, as we currently ro rotated incorrectly as well. So, that's always good. So that we're just correcting our rotation again. But, you know, it's fine. Just fine. Uh, burn up. Bits not going, it's not as I was going in the correct direction. And hello, lock up for autosave. So, yeah, now we need to correct our velocities. We've got our alignment pretty good, so we need to correct velocity. And then, look over way in. Slowly does it. Yeah. And then I realise I'm rotated wrong. This thing won't fit. <laughs> oh dear. So it's a case of stop. Stop, 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 stop. Soon, I think. There we go. Stopping. And then we need to rotate it so that, you know, we're pointing the correct way. And I start rotating the the opposite direction I want to, but I figure at this point, let's just go the full circle. Or well, the full three quarters of a circle. Anyway. Work our way around. Let me get ourselves lined up properly for that docking port. And overshooting, of course. Use the RCS to give us a quick boost to get back in the correct direction. And flick the SAS so it holds us correctly and what chance it just flickers past it continuously. Anyway, there we go. We're pretty much close to the line now, about 0.3 degrees off. Close enough for position, so let's finish this off, I think. Oh no, we're still fiddling around with it a bit. Yeah, still fiddling. Fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. Anyway. So now... Are, you, are we going to start trying to finish off the stockings anytime soon? Or do I have time to go and pour myself a drink glass of Pepsi Max past me? No, we're still, we're still aligning perfectly. Oh well. Anyway, uh, just aligning properly and nearly there now pretty much just a case of wobbling around continuously but I think we're there and now correct correct horizontally start moving towards the target anytime soon or are we still fiddling around trying to get a line properly yep uh, there we go so horizontal alignment achieved and then we just start Drifting back towards there, and then, yep, overshoot that way, but oh well. Good practice for the next uh, one of these we have to do. We've got two to do, remember? So, there we go, come on, approach, gradual. Yep, and now, just speed ourselves in a bit more. Or just crawl in. It's hard to remember what I did. <laughs> anyway. Here we go. Coming in slightly wrong, so correcting a bit here and there. And our final uh, rotation difference is about 0.3, so that's pretty damn close, really. So now let's speed this all up again and do this one ultra fast. This is already shown it off once, and this one is slightly faster. I got better at doing it, so. Move away from the car so we can reverse down and get it correct. And as you can see, 270 degrees again is the correct rotation. And drift our way in. And we're getting closer now. So I'm going to stop the uh, stop the speed up now, I think. And you can see the issue here. The RCS blocks are going to interact badly. Oops. So, yep, as you can see, we get caught on the other science pod. Oopsie daisy. So, uh... Aside, um, 
Let's go. Let's go again. Uh, back off uh, a bit and put some distance between me and that. And the mag locks on the blocking port side. No, but at this point we've rotated while trying to dock. And if we look here, it's all skew with. So I figure, you know what? Let's undock and go again. So let's undock and. Well, yeah. In the end, I decide let's do, let's do it again. So, attempt numero dos. This time with quick saves. Yeah. Oh dear. Anyway, so slowly inching our way in is let's come in from the side and correct the horizontal difference at the last minute. And just not quite, quite. Nope, you're docking now. It's like oh great, but actually it works well and. It's virtually, it, it looks correct, so it's good. Everything looks aligned properly. So, yeah. On this time, I did l I did a more efficient launch route, so that big red tank, we haven't aligned to Minmus yet, but that big red tank has a lot of fuel left in it, so. Also, uh, those side fuel tanks, we dump their fuel into that big red fuel tank, so that and then ditch them as we no longer need to carry them. So we get a lot of more fuel out of that, uh, red, uh, that, uh, that first stage than we did before. But at this point, all of this is just stuff we'd already done before in terms of getting to Minmus. So I think we're going to cut here. Yeah, I can see the cut is coming in. Three, two, one, and cut. There we go. I am awesome. Right. Anyway, yeah, it's called hindsight. So, plan is. I wasn't really thinking here, but then I realised. Wait, it's more efficient if you combine your plane changes, uh, if you combine your manoeuvres. So if I should combine the plane change and the uh, and the orbital entry burn, I'll save fuel. So let's bring the uh, apoapsis, uh, periapsis, and the uh, ascending node. Is it? I think it's the ascending node. Yeah, I think it's the ascending. Yeah, let's bring the periapsis and the ascending node together. That way, our periapsis will be closer to the planet. And secondly, we can do the maneuver combined. So, good, 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 good. So that's what we do. And you see that coming together pretty quickly. And then we're pretty much aligned. So we're going to do a maneuver which combines those two. Our maneuver. First of all, we're going to break down to a decent altitude. Like that. Yeah, just trying to get the maneuver right. Uh, I was thinking maybe I could, you know, uh, get get an encounter this orbit. No, not not really a smart idea there, is it? So what we do instead is just uh, plan ourselves out, get ourselves low power axis, but west in line, and then you know. That's the plan. We're, we've got our plan now, so now we're using the RCS to align us properly. But um, this changes our velocity, so that perfectly executed plan. Not quite so perfect, but we go with it anyway. Uh, even though our course is no longer passing right through that uh, maneuver node, we'll go with it. It's our best indicator of where we need to be. And also, if we fiddle around with our RCS on this side, it might push the orbit back closer. So but we go with it. So. Yeah, and then time warping. CAC is of course fixed at this point, so don't have to worry about that anymore. I'm starting to get signal relays off of the station now, so that station has about what 15 of the uh, retractable antenna com relays, so it is a pretty uh, it's a pretty good relay station really. It means now if I send a service mission to the uh, Minmus. As long as it's on the uh, flight path of that orbit of that base, it doesn't need to have that powerful system. In fact, as long as it can get contact with more satellites, it doesn't need that powerful com system. As well, the satellites have a powerful enough com system to reach Kerbin anyway, so you know, as long as I don't need to have that many comms on it. Yeah. So, pretty much carrying out our Orbital insertion burn from Minbus. Not quite perfect, but oh well. 
and watching the Kerbal Engineer status. It's you now scrolling into further negatives, but oh well. Anyway, the orbit is flattening, orbit itself is flattening out and it's closing. But you know, it's getting more circular. And captured. There we go. So now it's just a case of finishing off this braking maneuver, and then we'll be good to go. So, pay it to swings around to the side and start diving towards the surface. So it's about time that we stopped burning, and just yeah, try and get as close as possible, but don't care really. And then it's just a case of a regular, uh, a regular rendezvous. So. We've done that a lot recently, so let's just cut to the actual rendezvous itself. So we use the space center to get the maximum time warp possible. Cheaty cheaty, but uh, cheaty cheaty, but oh well. It was a seven day wait otherwise. Seven day wait at fifty times time warp, a hundred, a thousand, a hundred, fifty, a hundred, a thousand, hundred, fifty, hundred, thousand, fifty. So we decided let's just do it at a consistent high time warp of about ten thousand, I think. What's the fastest you can get? I don't know. But yeah, just a fast time warp. And we're here. We're not perfectly. We don't have a perfect encounter, but it's close enough for us. So. Now, what we do? We slow the velocity relative to the target and then prepare to dock with them. So, we're going to overshoot. I can guarantee you that. But oh well. So. Uh, yeah, and also I'm confused here as I'm trying to point procreate and try and speed up relative to the target, not actually slow down and work my way in. So, oopsie daisy. Oh well. So, we'll take that the other way, and that should see us through to, uh, yeah. As you can see, we just got shot past the target. It's about to pass beneath us. Not past it yet, but we're gonna go past it definitely. Anyway, we're now pointing the correct direction to uh, break, so, yeah. There we go, and as you can see, flexing the spacecraft pretty precariously, but, you know, we, we come to it, fine. And now it's time to start burning towards the target itself, so we use the RCS, of course, we have plenty of it at this point. Uh, on the station we've actually got at this point in the video, we have enough liquid fuel on RCS to pass the contract anyway, it's just accommodation we don't have, so hence when this has enough room for seven Kerbals, four in the science labs and three in the command pod, it's to make up that twelve we desperately need. we currently have about five on the station, so this just brings up to just, just the right amount for the contract, so, you know, intelligent. So, yeah. Now we're gonna align for the retrograde we just break and you know not smash into that station. Breaking it now would be terrible. But oh well. So yeah. Spinning around, lining up with our retrograde marker. And then using makers of docking this thing onto that station, so yeah. Pulls in the RCS from well the autopilot's doing that for me. And yeah, just Gently, gently does it. About almost 200 meters away now, so we're getting pretty close. Should probably start firing to slow down sometime soon. 100 meters, and there we go. Gently does it, don't want to snap the spacecraft at this point. And yeah, so we're going to stop here. I'm moving away from it slightly, but oh well. And we're just going to time up until we can actually see what we're doing. As this is a large payload we got to dock, and I don't want to dock it at night. So, yeah. And then we're, trying, we're planning on docking onto the truss, and we're going to dock onto the lower side of the truss, as the upper side, well, the upper side I've got plans for, and I want to leave that uncovered. So, you know. I want to have that fully open for solar panels. That's my plan. So nearly out into the sun now and there we are so it's time to detach from the engine stage and then make our way to the station there's a lot of uh, spare fuel in orbit of Minmus brilliant, brilliant I guess for future uh, interstellar missions that come to Minmus to refuel as it's one of the best places to, to refuel but 
I guess rather than having to land, send craft down to land on the surface, they could just come and uh, find a craft <laughs> full of fuel and took with took it back to the back to the main craft and use that to refuel. I guess be smart. I guess. But yeah, I guess we can. Be, yeah, that's probably what we'll end up using them for. So no need to approach an RTS as we have no more rocket engines left on this. Yeah. I did say that docking port on my one was going to get up when I use this episode, so one of the best tools I have to say for playing Kerbal Space Program is that docking port alignment. So yeah, approaching the truss section, and as you can see we're coming in at one of the upper docking ports, So, we, but we do have one of those lower ones open, right next, right in line with, that, uh, with the command part of the station, so that's where we're docking. So we break relative to the target, and then get ourselves pointed. Well, first of all, select the correct node. Oh yeah, you also may notice that the uh, second just has all the solar panels done correctly. A bit hard to tell from here, but you know, all the solar panels on that one are done correctly. I corrected the mistake on the first one. Well, no, I, I corrected the mistake in the vehicle assembly body. I haven't corrected the first one yet. That requires shipping up some solar panels to do that, and um, materials for an engineer to do it as well. So, you know, you know, it could be worse, but oh well. Nearly aligned now. Uh, this thing is terrible to dock, as the RCS is misbalanced completely. So, yeah. We're also going to pass right, we're going to pass the node now as well, so well done. We're going to reverse again. Quick save, so if something goes wrong, we can revert, but you know. Anyway, now we're behind the node, really, so we're going to slam into the station unless we reverse right now. So here's me going, oh, those lines are red. That means I should start reversing. Right? Please say you start reversing. So there we go. Reversing. And we didn't, well, we didn't come that close, really, but close enough, really, not to worry about it, but, oh well. We're now correct, and we just slow down our rate of departure away from the node, so that you know we don't have that far to go in the future. Where we've got those things perfectly aligned. So forward now, probably. Or oh, you're gonna get yourself perfectly aligned, phased. You know, oh, top cells moving away, but we're still going for that perfect alignment before we even think about closing the rest of the distance. And we've overshot. Nearly our uh, soft controls don't give that much choice for fast reaction, but oh well. You can see down there the blue arrows on the uh, roll, yaw, and pitch meters. They typically, that means you're in uh, slow controls, basically. Billion for docking, but there we go. We have the science lab on the station, and you can see in the top right hand corner that flashing means we have completed the contract. We have finally finished building this damn station. We spent far more building on it than we were paid, but oh well. But there we go, it's brilliant now as we have a science station out in orbit of Minmus. And now, well, now you know what it's time for beauty shots. Woot! And be careful not to smash anything. But yeah, I have to say, as the station goes, it's a pretty good one. And we have lots of room for expansion on this, so you know, that's always good. We can have all refinery. Or, or refinery, yeah, or refinery on the station, or refining. So, you know, I have to say, this is a pretty damn good station. And then I realise, we just have Jeb out. Let's come out again and have him do some actual science, shall we? <laughs> so, yeah, we're gonna start using these labs to research things now, so that's good. Science! So, yeah, this station will now pay for itself. An advancement of Kerbal Kind. And yeah, as you can see, we have a decent amount of data stored in there. I'm going to start the research, and that will be us. Uh, it generates two signs a day. If we get another scientist up there, your belt rate will be increased. So, you know, I have to say, that is a successful mission. And I'm not sure how much of this video I have left to show. Let's see. Ooh, we have another two minutes or so, so yeah, more booty shots. 
Come on, Faze, you can end them now, can't you? Yeah. There we go, starting the research. We get we get the science now. Lots and lots of it. And we can store a lot of data on this as we have uh, two labs as well, so we got so much data we can't handle it all in one. Stick a scientist in the second lab and bam, we can now handle two uh, hundred one thousand five hundred science rather than just uh, seven hundred fifty. And here I am trying to see if anybody can actually see the surface of Minmus from their command pods. Uh, Bob can't. I know Jeb can't. Whether the bunch in the command pod can, I don't think they can, but oh well. No, yeah, so nobody can see the surface of Minmus on, on this station. Well done. Well done. Well done. See, Jeb is looking completely <laughs> the wrong way. Give him half an hour and he might be looking at it correctly, but right now, not, not, no, no, not a chance in hell. So, yeah. And I think there's only one more thing I'm going to do now. Just take a look around the craft and see if what needs to be added on. And the answer to that is not that much. But, you know, I uh, need more solar power on this. And more battery storage, so, yeah, that's coming. That's coming up. So, yep. Yeah. So to make room for the solar array, it's time to retract those antennas uh, so that you know we can dock things on there without worrying about smashing them. Because these things are going to go along the length of the structure rather than uh, sticking out from it, so we can't have the antennas there. We still have loads left to handle it, so, you know, no worries there. And, yeah, this, that leaves this thing with, what, 10? Um, ooh. Phase out!